of African Action Congress, AAC. Femi Aborishadi, it's good to have you on State Affairs. Thanks so much for having me. You are one of the lawyers of Shuare. That's right. How has he been in court so far? Well, the last experience in court uh, is so sad. I still have not recovered from it because I witnessed the armed invasion by security agents, many of whom were masked carrying guns in the court premises. In the court premises. And I had to beat back tears that how is it that Nigeria could have degenerated to this level? Because I am in a position to say authoritatively that not even under military dictatorships did we have things so bad. What not ha even under the military dictatorship of General Muhammad Buhari. The courts were never invaded. Court orders were obeyed. So how is it that a regime elected, supposedly elected by the electorate, will now usurp the powers of the judiciary? What and happened? Desecrate what happened inside the court, inside the court on the 6th of December? On the 6th of December, the court adjourned on the 5th of December and gave the SSS 24 hours within which they should release Shuwure and Pakari. And that we should come back on the 6th of December for a report of compliance with that order. Because the court expressed shock why the SSS will require the shorties already cleared by the court to come for verification again by the SSS. The court asked the question rhetorically, are we running parallel courts in this country? I gave another, trying to paraphrase the, the, the court. I gave another and this is asking for the shorties to come for verification. So the court gave a 24-hour ultimatum. And we were in court on the 6th of December to give report of uh, compliance. Truly, the SSS complied with that 24-hour ultimatum, released Shawore and Bakari, and also paid the 100,000 Naira cost awarded against the prosecution for delaying the hearing of the matter because the prosecution witnesses, statements of uh, the witnesses to the prosecution, which the court had ordered to be given to the uh, defense counsel, were never given. So for that reason, the court awarded 100,000 which was also paid. And the lead counsel to the defense, Femi Falano, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, informed the court that from what we could see, observe outside, there were plans to re-arrest Shore and Bakari. Because by the gate of the Federal High Court, higher thugs were there chanting songs how did you know they were hired talks? Well, if they are not hired talks, no ordinary person would be campaigning against the order of the court for the release of Shogure and Bakari. And they were advising in, in the songs, in the statements, in what they were saying, that the court should answer of these people are criminal, they are, they are not... Uh, they, they, they lack credibility with placards. So when Femi Falano raised the matter in court, what happened? The 
our prosecution counsel deny knowledge of any plan to re-arrest and that there was nothing like that. So we thought they would live up to what they had told the court. Unfortunately, as we rose, another case was called and we're about to step out. The pounds on Shore, the SSS as, uh, uh, agents, pounds on Shore, and he demanded, where is the warrant of arrest? And of course, his supporters too, also demand, where is the warrant of arrest? They will not, you know, produce any. And right inside the court, they wanted to forcefully take, take him away. In that situation, they even threatened to shoot. Did they come with guns into the court? They came with guns into the court. The unfortunate thing is that it was difficult. I mean, use, uh, with, the journalists use wisdom. If anybody had attempted to capture them, they could have shot the person dead. That is why, you know, those who were, who were armed inside the court could not be captured. But they were there. But the DSS and said I, it was stage managed. Was it stage managed? Well, uh, uh, I think I think that uh, uh, I think that nobody they, they themselves would not believe that statement. But they made because, a statement. Because they made a statement. What I know is that when they disrupted proceedings in the court, the judge are to rise abruptly. In fact, she fled for her life. She fled? She fled for her life. Did you see her running? Of course, I saw her. Because the normal thing in the court is if the court will, will rise, mm. I rise. And then the registrar will say, court, and we'll all stand up for the judge to move out. Nothing like that happened. There was no time for such niceties. And it's against the law for the DSS to invade a courtroom, right? It is, of course, it is. And after that, the judge summoned the late counsel to the prosecution and the defense, Lehman and Femi Falana SAA. And the leader of the SSS apologized to the judge, profusely, for the invasion. That happened immediately after the invasion? Immediately after. They apologized. I mean, they accepted invading they the court. They accepted they were in court and apologized for the disruption of court proceedings. In that fact, I took on one of the leaders and I asked him, even if you have to re-arrest, must you do so inside court premises, within the courtroom? And he said they were going to look into it. Femiya Bori Shade is on state affairs. He's one of the lawyers of Omoye Le Shure. Now let's look at this. Shure and Bakari are facing seven charges preferred against them by the federal government. They are alleged to have conspired to commit treason, money laundry, and insulting the president. What is the argument of the defense? Well, uh, three main, three main charges, really. One is uh, we should not forget that initially they also what they saw to the press, the media persecution mm. was that. They were arrested. Shuwara in particular was arrested for terrorism. It was on that basis they sought the order of the court to detain him for 90 days, in which the court gave them opportunity to detain him for 45 days. And one of their grounds is that he went to Dubai to take millions of dollars with a view to waging war and removing Mr. President. Did he do that? Unfortunately for them, 
unfortunate, very, very unfortunately for them. There is no evidence that Shuwere has ever visited Dubai in his lifetime. Mm. So that automatically collapsed. So we'll be waiting for them to prove their case. Because when you say they have committed treasonable felony for staging a revolution now campaign, which we all witnessed, recorded by the media to be peaceful, and that in fact the peaceful protesters were violently attacked. They staged their protest only with placards. Give us a country that benefits the ordinary people. So, from that point of view, there's no way the prosecution will be able to sustain their charge. Because under Section 40 of the Constitution, the citizens have the right to protest peacefully. So the challenge is for the prosecution to what? now tell the court how they sought to remove Mr. President by carrying out a constitutionally donated right of peaceful protest. Even if it is third revolution Even now. Even if it is third revolution now. In actual fact, in 2011, President Muhammad Buhari encouraged Nigerians to emulate the masses of Egypt who brought down the regime in that country, that they should do the same thing in Nigeria. He was never arrested. In actual fact, in 2003, when the AMPP organized a protest in Kano, they were attacked by the police. And Muhammad Buhari and leaders of the AMPP approached uh, Mr. Femi Falana, SAN, you know, to challenge the attack of that protest in 2003. And the court said that right of peaceful protest is a fundamental right and that they didn't need any permission from the police to carry out that test. He was not arrested. He was not detained for carrying out a protest to bring down a government. So what's the point so the you're point trying to I'm make? The point I'm making is that the charges against them cannot stand the test of law. You cannot ac accuse someone of money laundering on the basis, on the ground that he transferred money from his own personal account into the account of his own company. $19,000 the allege. Even if that were so, that cannot amount to an offense of money laundering. Did they, did they insult the president? Well, insulting the president can never constitute a treasonable offense. It is subject to the law of defamation. Mr. President or any other person insulted can go to court and claim damages. That cannot constitute an offense. It is not an offense. Why, is, our law. why is Shuwere so important to Buhari? Why do Buhari want to keep him? No, I think that, as Professor Wole Shoyenka put it, the regime is paranoid. The regime is afraid. The regime is aware that the masses of Nigeria have been pushed to the wall. Poverty is pervasive. Hunger is pervasive. Hopelessness is pervasive. Unemployment is pervasive. The basic means of life are denied ordinary people. And the regime is afraid that the masses may answer the call of a peaceful protest that may shake the foundation of the regime. That is the only rational basis for wanting to keep 
to worry because I believe the regime, you know, perceives that it speaks the minds of ordinary people. What are the conditions of his bail? The conditions of his bail originally were that he was not a bail uh, by providing two shorties uh, with uh, who swear to an affidavit of means of uh, 100 million, one of whom should deposit 50 million naira uh, with the registry of the court, that he should not talk to the press, he should not address any rally, he should not move out of Abuja and Bakare should not move out of Oshobo, except when he goes for the trial in Abuja. These we found to be stringent. These we found to amount to unconstitutionally unconstitutional uh, bail terms, and we applied for a variation. And the court varied only one of the conditions, reducing the 100 million to 50 million. The court refused to vary the other grounds. And we consider those grounds you know, to be unconstitutional. If you say someone should not address the rally, should not grant a uh, press interview, you know, that amounts to a denial of the constitutional right of, 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 of expression. If in the process, he commits any offense. He can be taken on. Then the deposit of 50 million naira, in actual fact, in the case of Dasuki, the same court, the same judge, made similar, gave similar condition that certain amount of money should be deposited by Dasuki. And Dasuki's uh, counsel challenged that condition at the Court of Appeal. And the Court of Appeal set it aside. It was surprising that the same court, the same judge, also repeated the same similar condition in the case of Shuwure and Bakari. But good enough, the court varied that condition of deposit of cash. Now, when Shuwure was released, he was in a, uh, a red car, and when he saw journalists, he alighted from the car spoke to journalists. Does that amount to granting a press interview? Well, uh, I listened to what he said. All he said was that he was grateful to the Nigerian people and to lovers of uh, freedom within Nigeria and internationally. I do not think that uh, that could be read to, me, to amount to a violation of his uh, terms of... Uh, of bail. I think that it's uh, political statements that the court may consider to be a violation of the terms of bail. What about if he clenches his fist and say revolution now? What does that mean? Does he have the right to still continue to say that? No, that, that, there's nothing wrong. That's not, he, has, he has not, he has not violated any, any term mm. of the bail in saying revolution now because uh, uh, the Nigerian people have always been calling for revolution now. President Muhammad Buhari also called for revolution now. So like Buhari, uh, like Shuwere? Like, like Buhari, like Shuwere. And uh, uh, he, has, he, has not, he has not involved himself in any rally. It is if he involves himself in rallies, addressing uh, protesters and chanting revolution now that, you know, it may be considered to have violated the terms. But merely telling journalists that I thank the Nigerian people who have stood by us, you know, that cannot amount to a violation of his terms of bail. How does he even feel? Is this the strong inside? I am impressed I am motivated, I am inspired by his courage. Mm. Not only Shore, but Bakari. They remain strong. 
and they remain strong on the basis that they know they are not alone. Look at the way he was fighting always, in court. I always reiterate that each time I meet them in the court, the world is with you. You are not alone. For and anybody in incarceration, that is the only knowledge the person needs to remain strong. He is a prisoner of conscience. Of course, he's a prisoner of conscience because he speaks, he speaks for the people. The, the, the issues uh, around revolution now protest. I never personal. Mm. She will raise not a poor man by any standard. So he fights for the people. And so, uh, for that reason. And you were the first prisoner of conscience in Nigeria. Yeah, uh, as far as my detention uh, in 1989 uh, was concerned, mm. I was declared prisoner of conscience by the Amnesty International. You know, some would say the likes of Shuwere, Femi Aborisha, it seems you enjoy being detained. No, the, the issue is that for people who are committed to social change, we cannot otherwise live our lives. And at our age now, it is too late to compromise. Mm. It is just too late. We cannot otherwise live our life. Before you go, are you appealing the conditions of the bill? Of course, the unconstitutional conditions of bill, which the trial court has not varied, would be challenged at the Court of Appeal. The condition that you should not uh, move outside Abuja is the violation of the freedom of movement under the Constitution, and there are plethora of uh, presidents, Supreme Court you know, uh, authorities, that say such a condition is an unconstitutional denier of bail in the first place. When is your next day in court? The court adjourned the trial to February 11, 12th and 13th. The struggle continues. The struggle continues. Comrade Femi Aborishari, thank you for featuring on State Affairs. Thanks so much for having me. We commend your commitment to social justice. Thank you. Femi Aborishari is a human rights lawyer. He's one of the lawyers defending Omoyele Shuore and Wale Bakari. The program is State Affairs. I am Edmond Dupilo. I'll be back after this break. Don't go away.